Hello and welcome to another video where this time we're going to use some of my favourite techniques to help us improve this image of a wolf that I took at Cotswold Wildlife Park. Now we're going to start by brightening those eyes before further enhancing the lighting, the colours, the tones in the image. We're going to take it from this to this. Right, let's make a start with those eyes. We're going to come up to the toolbox where I'm going to select the lasso tool. Now, if we come down to tool options, you can see I've got the top lasso here. This is the standard lasso. Coming over to this area, I've got the add to selection. That is important. So make sure you click on this button here and you can see add feather. Good idea. But how much do you feather the selection by? Now that can be down to guesswork, but there's a rather nifty workaround and I'll show you that in just a moment. For now, let's pull this out of the way. We're now going to zoom in so we can see the eyes clearly. So I'm going to press and hold down the space bar. Now I'm going to press and hold down command or control. So that space bar, command or control, you've got the zoom tool. Just going to click down, going to come into 100%, just releasing command or control. So I'm now just pressing down the space bar. We can lift it up into position, releasing the space bar. There's the lasso tool back. Right, so I'm going to click down and I'm going to go around the inside area of the eye, coming back to the start. When you reach the start, releasing it, there's our selection and you'll notice the lasso tool now has a little plus symbol. That means we've got the add to selection. We can come around the other eye, coming around like this, back again to the start, releasing it and there are our two selections. Now to brighten the eyes, we're going to use an adjustment layer and the adjustment layer we're going to use is levels. Watch what happens to those selections. They've disappeared. They have now become a part of the mask. And you can see these two tiny little white specks. That's the area we're working with. The histogram bunched up, left hand side, darker pixels. So to brighten it up, we need to come to this slider. We're going to click on this. We're going to move it across. I'm going to take it into this area here. You can see it brightening up nicely. There, that will do. What have we got? We got 171. Just switching it off. You can see there's the before, there's the after. Now I mentioned about feathering and a rather nifty workaround. Well, that nifty workaround now involves softening the mask. So if you bring your cursor over the mask, press and hold down the Alt or the Option key. Hold down Alt or Option, click on the mask, and there it is. Now to soften this, we're going to go to Filter, Blur. We're going to come across to Gaussian Blur, and we're not going to blur it by that amount. Instead, let's drop it right the way back down to this area here, moving this into position, and you can see our hard edge. Now by moving the slider across, if I take it to this area here, you can see the way that's now softened. So we've now gone from this to this. We have softened it by a radius of 1.6 pixels. In effect, we have now feathered that selection by 1.6 pixels. But I think we need to take it a little bit further. So let's just click on it. Let's take it into this area here. Let's go to 2.8 pixels. Clicking down. There's the before. There's the after. We've now effectively feathered that selection by 2.8 pixels. And we're going to click OK to that. Now to put the mask back into place, all you need to do is click on the visibility icon. But just switch this off and on, looking pretty good like that. Right, let's zoom out to fit on screen. I'm going to use Command-0 or Control-0. Next, we're going to add a little bit of colour to the image. Once again, an adjustment layer, this time Hue Saturation. Now with Hue Saturation, we're going to come to the Saturation slider, moving it across to the right-hand side. I'm going to take it to this area here, plus 20. That looks pretty good. If I just switch it off and on, you can see a nice subtle bit of colour there being added to our image. We're now going to darken the image down. But as you look at the picture, you can see with this image, it's got leaves in it. That gave me an idea. How about giving it a dappled light effect? So to start off with, we're going to darken the image down, come into an adjustment layer. We're going to go to levels. Now with levels to darken it down, if you come to the center slider here, we're going to click on it. I'm going to move it across. I'm going to take it to this area. We've got 0 0.70. And if I just switch it off, you can see there it is bright. There it is dark. I mentioned the dappled lighting effect. We're now going to go to filter, render, clouds. And when you click on clouds, 
There it is, bringing my cursor over the mask, pressing and holding down shift, switching the mask off, there it is dark, and you can see there's that dappled lighting effect we've now applied to the image. Right, let's have a closer look at this. As we did before, holding down alt or option, clicking on the mask, the black, this is where you're looking right the way through. The white areas, this is where it's being held back. The grey areas, a little bit of a transition between the two. But you can cycle through those clouds. If you go up to filter, cloud, there it is there. Click on this and you can see the, the way you can reapply it. That actually looks pretty good. I'm going to leave it like that for the moment. You can also use the shortcut Command F or Control F. So if you use Command F, Control F, you can cycle through the clouds. But as I said, I think this one looks good. So clicking on the visibility icon and yeah, let's just switch this off and on. And coming over, let's take a look at the overall effect. There is our dappled light effect. Right, we have now darkened down our wolf's head as well. So I want to bring through a little bit more light in to our wolf's face. So coming over to the toolbox where we're going to pick up the gradient tool. Now coming down to two options, we need to click in the window of the gradient editor. Make sure you select this one, which is the foreground, which is black to transparent. There it is, black to transparent. That is very important. And we're going to click OK to that. Now I don't like to use 100%. Instead, I prefer to bring through the effect gradually. So let's come down to 60%. That looks pretty good. You may have noticed the way this is faded down. And we're going to pick up the radial gradient. So let's fold this down out of the way. Come into our wolf's face. I'm going to click, going to drag it out. Let's come over the eye just again with this, just bring it through the eye. And you can see the way we can just there. Because I've used 60%, not 100%, the way we can bring this through gradually. Now, looking at the image, you can see there's lighting coming to the top of the wolf's head down around the area of his head here, down onto the shoulders, around this area. So let's just bring through the lighting here. That looks good like that. Around this area, going over it twice. So I've got darker, that's around about 100% with this. Just going over that once there, that looks good. Right, I'm not gonna touch the leg because I think that's actually looking bright enough. Yeah, tip of the tail, a little bit of light in there and perhaps a little bit of light in here as well. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a vignette to the image. Over to the toolbox, I'm gonna to select the elliptical marquee tool. Now coming down to tool options, there it is, there's the elliptical marquee, so select this one. I've also got the new selection, so click on this first little button. Folding that down out of the way, we're gonna click on it, gonna drag it over the wolf, something like this. Now, because we got the new selection, when you bring your cursor inside, you've got that little rectangle with the flag on the top, so you can move it into position. Now, to darken it down for the vignette, we're going to use an adjustment layer, and we're going to use levels. And if we come down to the bottom slider here, when I click on this, if you move it right the way across, you're going to introduce black. So let's do that. We're going to make it, and you can go to solid black. If you move this one across, you can go to white, making it solid white. If you use this slider, you can see the way you can make it darker, but you get that color coming through with this as well. Let's come to this one. Yes, you make it lighter, but once again, it's got the color. So using this slider, we can take it down. I'm going to deliberately darken it down further than you need to, just so we can see the effect. Let's go to this sort of area here. Right, next, we're going to inverse the mask so the darker part is going to come on the outside. All you need to do for that very simple shortcut, Command-I or Control-I. So that's Command-I on a Mac, it is Control-I on a PC. Next, we're going to adjust the selection we've made. Image, Transform, Free Transform, Command-T, Control-T will do that. So let's lift it up. Let's bring it down further like this. I'm still going to cover the paws. Day. don't mean to bring it out no I wasn't talking to you wolf bringing the vignette out to this area here just out like that double click into apply right hard edge as we did before filter blur Gaussian blur and call it a hunch I don't think 2.8 pixels is enough if I just bring my cursor over the edge there it is you can see it we're going to click on the slider I'm going to whack it right the way over into that area You'll notice the way it pops. Let's take it a little bit further. 
Right, let's just have a look at this. Look, we're going to take it across. I'm going to bring it down into this sort of region here. Coming up to this slider, we're going to darken it down further. And I like using this. I'm just going to move it. And as we take it over, look at the way we can darken it down. But look at the way it enriches those colors, those tones in the image. I'm not going to go too mad with it, though. I'm just going to have a subtle effect there. That looks good. We've got 11. Just going to back this up a little bit more, taking it to this region. Just having a look. There's our before. There's our after. Nice subtle effect. If you press V on the keyboard or pick up the move tool, we can now move the vignette around and you can see there it is. And look at the way it's bobbing around on that mask. So you can just readjust it should you want to. Finally, we're going to finish off with an adjustment layer of levels. And when you look at this, I can see a little bit of a gap there in the histogram. Press and hold down Alt or Option. Click on the slider. Screen turns black moving it in blue coming through that's fine spots of red coming through fine white no not fine you want to avoid white this is where it's going to be clipped in the highlights it's going to be solid white so i'm going to back this up i'm going to take it into this region here there it should look pretty good just back and you see a trace of white there that looks good like that just switching this off and on looking pretty good let's just drop this down out of the way not sure if that vignette is just a little bit too dark so let's just click to bring this back i'm not going to move that over here don't forget everything with this because we've used adjustment layers is completely adjustable so save it in layers Put it aside, leave it a couple of days, come back to it. Then you can adjust anything, you can even just reduce down the opacity should you want to, just to blend things in. Let's fold this down, or should I say close it down out of the way. Let's have a very quick run through. This is what we started off with. We brightened up the eyes. We added some color. We gave a dappled light effect. There is our vignette finishing off with levels. That is our finished image. Go on, give it a try. Let's just put it on a black background. I'm going to press tab on the keyboard to remove all of the panels. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe as there's lots more videos to come. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.